So this is part two of how to diagnose your CAN bus system on, in this case, the Ford Mondeo. Um, this time we're going to be using a laptop and we're going to use an interface, uh, ODB2 interface cable. This is the first one I ever bought and it's your typical uh, cheap six pounds um, cable. Works perfectly well to be fair. Um, except that it will only get across about 40% of the modules in the car. Um, that's because you can only really see the HS bus. Um, my new cable, this one, has a special switch on the side and uh, that allows me to switch between the HS bus and the MS bus as you're going to see. The best way is really USB, frankly. Um, the Forescan program that we're going to be using uh, likes it, it makes it very easy to set up. Um, although for Forescanner, I did find that I needed to download a driver to make the uh, make the interface work with the with the program. Anyway, let's press on. So the first thing we're going to do is connect the cable into the ODB port like this. And I'm making sure that the switch is switched over to the left-hand side, which is onto the HS bus. This is the Forescan program that's uh, opened up. And if I, at the moment, we're on the car, and down the bottom here is the connect. I'm hoping you can see all of this. And it's saying, uh, is the ignition on? Yes, it is. The car's stationary, so I'm going to go OK. Would I like to optimize the uh, board rate to the uh, device? Yes, I would. Uh, now, because I've connected to the, this car in the past, it's remembered the profile. So I'm gonna hit no, and that's gonna force the, uh, the program to actually scan the car again. And here are, it's starting to find all the various modules, the PCMs there, SASM, these are all on the high-speed uh, CAN system, the high-speed network. There we are. Now it's asking me, does my device, is it capable of switching to the MS, the medium speed CAN system? The answer is yes, it is. So I'm gonna go down to the switch and switch that over. Come back up again get my finger out of the way and hit OK. And it continues on scanning. It's now scanning the medium speed network on the car. Now, medium speed is where all those um, not quite so important devices sit. It's your bulb monitoring, uh, it's the door opening switches, things like that that are all on the MS bus. On the HS bus is all the important things like ABS, engine control, etc. Now it's asking me, it's done all the scanning, it said, would I like to store this profile? And the answer is yes. There we are. Now you notice also that I've got some exclamation marks uh, on the left hand side of this, and uh, that's showing that I've got some um, error codes or I've had a history of error codes uh, on the car. So if I go to the DTC to look at the error codes, um, the ABS was showing up and it's now saying um, that the, the malfunction indicator lamp is on. It's interesting. On this, for this DTC, which means I've got an error, amazingly enough. Oh, that's in SAS, okay. And um, it also gives you advice on what you can do um, to perform some checks uh, on each, each of these modules. Let's look at this one. Uh, malfunction indicator lamp is off. Uh, that other one might have been full because I haven't got the engine running, but uh, again, you can get the idea that it gives you a bit of information on how you might diagnose each of these modules. These are faults that have been on the car, but have now gone. Um, you have the ability to clear the log. Um, or you can reset DTC. 
If I reset DTC, all these faults should go away, but the car will probably take a little while to remember its settings and might run a little rough for a while. So I'm going, uh, you can also, what else can you do? You can clear the log and therefore rescan, or you can save the log. I don't particularly want to save it. So I'm going for clear the, this action will reset DTC for modules you selected. Ah, are you sure? So that's kind of interesting, isn't it? So all I'm going to do is reset the DTC on the AB, uh, BCM. Yes. Please set it, the switch to HS. Okay. Cycle the ignition on off again. Okay. Please set HS bus to MS bus. So it's re-scanning the car again. Okay. Right. Now, what it's failed to do this time is actually see the uh, MS bus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just disconnect. I'm going to switch back to HS. I'm going to reconnect again. Uh, nip through all these these uh, pop-ups again. I'm going to go no to force it to rescan. Here it comes. Uh, yes, I've got a switch on my adapter, switching over, and then hit the OK signal, uh, OK on the pop-up. It's now scanning the... the MS bus, and you'll notice that I've got a lot of ticks this time, um, and very little exclamation marks. nearly finished all the modules are coming back clean I'm not going to save the profile so if I go to DTC now uh, let's have a look at the ABS there are no DTC's now left on this car so everything that I had was historic and that's been cleared now so some other things you can do with this car um, if you go into this thing that looks like an oscilloscope, um, go down the bottom. Uh, at the moment, I've, these are all the sensors on the car and you can uh, select any of the sensors and throw them up onto uh, the screen. So I'm going to do barometric pressure, let's just have that just for a laugh. Um, we're going to go down, what else have we got? That's interesting, uh, engine coolant temperature, that's going to be dead cold because I haven't started the engine. Um, oh, let's try intake air temperature. Um, so there's three sensors at the moment. And if I uh, tick the box to, to OK it, uh, you can see now those three sensors have appeared in the um, in this uh, table and if I hit the go the start button live uh, right it's asking me to switch back to the HS can which I've just done and there we are so at the moment my battery volts is sitting at 12.31 barometric pressure is 101 kPa um, and the inlet temperature is 29 degrees well wow, balmy day in uh, in London I would say Anyway, that's quite interesting because you can now monitor all the sensors on the on the car. There we go on test. So I can now do some tests on each of the modules, and let's check the BCM. Now BCM is body control module, so it's things like windscreen wipers, uh, lights, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and if I go down the bottom here and press that button, uh, this is going to do a self-test. Now, let's see what happens. 
Oops, sorry, a little warning sign came up. Uh, okay. Ah, it's also asking me to switch the switch back to HS, which I've just done, and hit OK. Right, so things that are happening, windscreen wipers are happening, uh, interior light has just come on, the water jets have just happened, the headlights have just come on, more windscreen wipers. So this is it testing the module for functionality, making sure it can control all the devices that are hanging off the module. And there we are, we're 100% done and it's all fine. I've got tick, green ticks in all the boxes. Anyway, that's a feel for what this can do for you and it will help enormously to find the problem on your car. This is the little spanner sign. So if I also go to the BCM, you can get to Pat's programming, uh, which is basically um, programming up additional keys. Um, you can only do this if you've got an extended license and the way you get an extended license is you have to join the Forscan um, forums basically and sign up for them and then there is a web page that you can um, put in some detail um, in particular about your your uh, laptop and um, and uh, you can get an extended license for this program but uh, is the vehicle equipped with keyless uh, start system no mine's not um, so it comes up with this well I've it's basically saying that I've got uh, two keys stored you don't want to delete any keys um, you don't want it uh, at all um, what you can do though is okay and go into key programming and then you can actually add additional uh, keys uh, to to the car and um, that's something you can play with on your own so I'm going to come out of that. Just looking at the um, programming, um, just for the moment. Some of these modules are uh, programmed specifically for your car. So you have to be really, really careful if you're going to be replacing them because you need the identical programming put into the new module. Um, and this is the, uh, what I think the way this works is that uh, there is a um, module configuration as built format. Um, you need to be able to record that um, before you try and configure um, in, uh, so that you can actually put the programming back into the new module. Um, I'm not going to go into that here. You're going to have to work it out yourself, I'm afraid. So let's go and help for a few of the uh, modules. First one being the BCM, and that's hidden underneath the glove compartment. And uh, to access it is fairly easy. You just uh, unclip the um, bit of carpet type material underneath, pull down. There's a little black knob, twist it. And the module just drops straight out and there's the multi-way cables that you can access fairly easily. Then there's the powertrain module, which you'll find uh, behind the passenger side uh, wheel arch. You have to take obviously the wheel off and the plastic uh, inner arch cover. In the fuse box, um, this is where some of the one of the cable looms terminates. You see these multi-way connectors just here. If you peel away the peel apart the left-hand cable, you'll find the white and white blue. That's the HS uh, CAM bus. Well, that's as much as I can tell you about the CAM system. Hopefully you found it interesting. Please subscribe to me and leave some comments. I always enjoyed reading the comments, uh, positive or negative. It doesn't matter whichever way. Anyway, goodbye for now.